How's it going you wonderful people it's Jay and in today's video we're going to take a trip back through time and look at the origin of the Mario Kart series so strap in and let's do this. It's absolutely bonkers coming off the back of the massively successful Super Mario Brothers. Back then, the thought of Mario characters driving around in go-karts was absolutely unheard of. But three decades later, we've had amazing Mario Kart games. So, in today's video, let's have a look at how it all began. When the Super Famicom or SNES launched way back in 1990, it was joined by a brand new racing concept. No, not Mario Kart, but the Space Age F-Zero. The game was designed using Mode 7, a piece of new tech that used clever rotation and scaling to give that illusion of 3D. Back then and even now, it was groundbreaking, powerful, space aged, and really demonstrated the raw power of the SNES. With that in mind, Nintendo went off to brew another racing game powered by Mode 7. F-Zero was a single player experience, so the main goal of this new project was to add a little bit of multiplayer and allow for two players or enemies to battle for first place. The initial concept didn't even feature Mario, but instead had characters in racing overall sitting on a track. Interesting, but not exactly exciting enough to fly off the shelves like F-Zero. As seen from sprites on the cutting room floor, it looked generic, with each racer having different colour palettes and the same basic driver sprite. About three or four months into development, Nintendo had a prototype where you had two different racers, one would drive past the other on the same screen. It was exciting, it was fresh, and really cemented the whole two-player game. According to Shigeru Miyamoto in an I Want to Ask interview, we decided to see what it would look like with Mario in one of the carts and everyone thought, ooh, that would look even better. Who knows, maybe the designer who drew the overalls on the earlier guy intended that it would be changed to Mario all along. The team had their characters now, but why carts instead of cars or even the bikes from Excitebike? Instead of dropping Mario into Formula 1 cars, the team wanted something a little bit more fun more cartoony and frantic. The project's director Hideki Kono went hard on the research reading books on kart racing and the team even went to a local amusement park for a day of go-kart racing. It was that concept that made the team opt for karts instead of Formula One cars. In a 1992 interview reposted by Shmue Plations, Shigeru Miyamoto said, When people play this game they have a big smile on their face. That was a big goal for us, a game where both players and onlookers would be laughing and smiling. In the interview we also discover that kind of freeform and experimental side to Nintendo. They weren't really set development flows, it was all kind of experimenting, trying new prototypes and really trying to get that feeling of driving perfect on the Nintendo SNES controller. The controller doesn't have an analog stick so relied on on and off switches on the D-pad so Nintendo really had to try and get that right. As well as pioneering mascot racers, Nintendo also pioneered the power slide or drift mechanic, wanting you to feel excited as you zip around a track instead of over realistic racing. It also came from Kono watching videos on classic street drifting where cars would take on corners while slamming on the brakes and counter steering, risking rolling off a mountain if done wrong. Kono noted how the team tried to implement these drift controls, but the majority just couldn't do it. After research, they opted for a simple hop and holding down the shoulder buttons, and there power sliding was born. To incentivize it, you'd get a little boost when drifting around the corners. Time it well and you'll break past the competition with ease. The SNES Classic also gave birth to items. Ever done an itemless race? You can in more recent Mario Kart games, it's super calming, it's super flowing. But if you slip behind the pack, it's near impossible to catch up. It's hard to believe, but the first game also had items. Apart from balancing the race and letting players of all abilities have fun, items were introduced due to the popularity of Pachinko and similar arcade games. The lower your rank, the better the item you might get, and racers up in front would get the more standard, probably more defensive, items. The team even considered to the option to remove items in the first game, but eventually stuck to their guns and used it as a selling point for Super Mario Kart. Talking items, Miyamoto said, it's kind of like Kimo Damashi. You experience fear 
if nothing happens. It's precisely because you don't know what's going to happen that makes it intense. If you knew to a certainty that nothing was going to happen, you wouldn't be scared at all, right? To carry on that theme park or amusement park feel, Nintendo added battle mode to the very first Super Mario Kart to make it stand out from your standard racing games. Being able to drive around in a sort of pseudo 3D space in the main cups was amazing, but being able to freeform in these, art, in these massive battle courses was amazing. Interestingly, when the team first created the battle mode, it originally had rapid fireballs, according to your Miyamoto. You'd pelt your foes with fireballs, something they even brought back in Mario Kart 8. It was a wide open space with little obstacles or features. It worked, but it kind of needed more. This is when Nintendo added maze-like structures to mix up the matches, obstacles, and it really prevented you from getting dizzy. Eventually classic items were added and we now have the battle mode that you know and love today. So there we go, a little insight into the birth of the Mario Kart series. It's amazing to see how much love and dedication and innovation Nintendo poured into the very first Mario Kart game. And we've kind of had that root, that core Mario Kart formula flow into all the more recent, all the more recent Mario Kart games. So what's your favourite Mario Kart game? What's your favourite Mario Kart tracks? Let us know with a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, this piece of Nintendo history, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, more mini documentaries, more gaming and retro videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And before you move on to the next video, be sure to check out our exclusive merch, Geeking Gaming Designs, voted for by you. Links are in the description below. Thank you for your support. And there we go, a little piece of Nintendo history. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye.